morning. <laughs> yeah, I'm all muzzled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, getting deep in here, folks. Getting deep. Golly. So spectacles on. That's what happens. Even when you get glasses, you can't read that. Mm -hmm. I can't. I take mine off, I then I can read. It. It's fine. <clears throat> I can read. I can read. Really? Yeah. Just I got an iPhone next week. <laughs> I did on like twelve pages. <laughs> 12 pages. <laughs> As, when I hit 44, my eyesight is right downhill. That's about the top. Yeah, that's pretty early. <clears throat> I didn't hit around about 49. I had LASIK done 20 years ago, but that you was so far off. But yeah. in my up close has been fine up until recently. Welcome to the Try to tie a fishing hook out here. <laughs> it is. Downhill from there. <laughs> Welcome to the oh, house. This be glad we live in the day and time where we've got glasses. And it's true. You know. <laughs> but of course they. Yeah, but they died at like twenty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if they was forty, they were old. I'm still not sure that I was going out. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is a ploy to get new technology in here. I mean, <laughs> what do you got? Some wild, evasive plants growing somewhere that you need rescue? All right, so are we ready? <clears throat> Can't, did you check on Facebook, like on your phone? <clears throat> well, what's time to make the indication is there's a meter. Of, um, okay. meter over here and nothing is registering. Well, oh, let's wait for them to get back on. Um, back it, up and running. He needs to reboot over here. And he, uh, <clears throat> yeah, tap it in. That's my heater. Don't you mess up that. <laughs> Get hold of my reach over there and warm my heater. It's a power yeah. It's a power we don't have a heater. She's just touching something. Yeah, I touch <clears> that. <throat> on, well, she's on that lay computer heat. over there. Yeah. It's out some heat. <clears throat> yeah, let's do that. Picture graph. Maybe an overhead. You remember overheads there with the transparencies and stuff? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I used to do that. We should we break one of those out. That'd be fun. <laughs> hey, what is that thing up there covered up? Is that the smoke detector? Oh, it's a camera? <clears throat> mm, it's a camera. Oh, that looks back that way. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Ooh. Can I move back over? Can we move? Are we ready now? Take the credit card. All right, we'll try it soon. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't sound like it's coming out there. It is coming out of these, but not out there. <clears throat> Let us know. I will tell them. To. Well, they can't hear me, so they, I can't That's tell. Them. <laughs> All right, you might preemptively put a post in it. Yeah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Dawson County Board of Commissioners 2022 budget uh, meetings, proposals for 20, 2022. Uh, thank you for your those that are in attendance and those are with us online. 
We'll start out with our extension agency, Clark, come on up. Just for the board's knowledge, uh, primarily uh, Clark is asking for rate increases for two people, which is the biggest thing in his budget. Uh, everything else is pretty similar uh, to what he had asked for in the past. So if you'll explain those uh, rate increase request. Sure. Thank you, Chairman, Commissioners. Um, yes, coming to you asking for it's, uh, it's about a total of uh, $2,793, which equates to uh, $2,190 in additional salary. And uh, that would be for my position, the county extension coordinator, and uh, Margie Miller, the county extension <coughs> administrative assistant. That co sort of equates out to a 6% raise plus a 2% COLA for this next year. Um, and... <coughs> I guess the only other thing significant would be a $500 decrease in small equipment. Questions for Clark? You said it was from Margene and who else? Me, myself. Uh, myself. <clears throat> do you have, do you have this piece? You should have this piece that has the... Yeah, it's right here. No. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> it? And you'll see on there under his extension, which, which is in the second column down, Gives you yes. people that's asking for. Okay. Oh, okay. excellent. excellent. I right. said I could see that. I must have been lying. Thank you. Questions Thank for you. Clark. <laughs> I like yellow. Anybody any questions for Clark? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. That's pretty easy. All right. Let me move my stuff here where I can keep moving this the way we want it to go. All right. Next up, we have. Information technology, Herman, come on up just a little bit for the, the board before Herman speaks. Uh, you'll see an increase of about $7,000 in professional services. That's the cybersecurity uh, that we have. Uh, that's pretty much self-explanatory there, but that's something we got to continue to do. Uh, I do want you to talk a little bit about the decrease in technical services computer of 16,000, I know that's being moved down to small equipment and there's a huge increase in small equipment of 46,500. So if you'll explain the needs uh, in reference to the small equipment and then also at some point in time, if you could get to us that upgraded equipment list, I'd like to see what exactly is on that list that you speak of there that needs to be upgraded. And so the difference in his budget from this year to next year, his request is $46,593. You'll also see, he'll explain, uh, he has two rate increase proposals as well for two employees, as well as four new full-time positions that I need you to explain, as well as some capital projects. All right, Okay. go ahead. <clears throat> I'm gonna try and, can you hear me? Good. Sorry, I have laryngitis. Okay, so I'll do the best that I can. Mm packets that I've given in front of you list out some of the information that I was actually going to speak to, but it's a lot of stuff detailing what we did last year, this year, and what we were accomplishing 2022. We have a lot of projects that we need to accomplish. A lot of it is catching up, making improvements on older technology. What uh, Billy said about the movement in from technical services down to small equipment is a correction because each year we end up moving money from technical services down to uh, small equipment. This is if I could stop you there for just a second. Okay. This 28,785, is that a number that has been <clears throat> deducted or is that the original number for 2021? We're actually going to be probably more than 16,000. We've already done some of that this year. The technical system, that was actually the original amputation. Okay, All right. thanks. All right. Go ahead. We use the small equipment fund to uh, fund projects like the Wi Fi upgrade that we're doing across all county offices. Uh, that's purchasing the new wireless access points. And installing the cable for those wireless access points to have them installed correctly. So we use that for different projects that come up during the year. Okay. That's the reason for that. Now, next 
I'll speak to the changes in staffing. Okay. Last time I came before you guys with our budget, I had asked for one additional employee to help offset some of the uh, overtime that my staff is putting in. Over this last year, I've done a comprehensive uh, review of how many hours are being put into things and where our resources are being used. And we definitely need more staff in the IT department, as well as organizing it into a true department. Okay, Some of those upgrades okay, include moving Will Shattuck to assistant IT director. Okay. <clears throat> also moving Cameron Burt to senior network engineer. Okay. Both of these are jobs that they're pretty much already doing, but don't get compensated for. The additional staff that I'm asking for, when I look at where our work orders and the bulk of our work comes from, it's really divided into three areas, the courthouse, the jail, slash Dawson County Sheriff's Office, and all of the other county offices. Okay, right now I've got four people, including myself, servicing everywhere, okay, 24-7, okay, seven days a week. We would, under this, we would put one person in the courthouse to work with all of the offices here and the courts, okay? You'll see a letter of recommendation in your packet, okay, for Judge, from Judge Tomlin about needing a position here for IT, okay? When the courts need something, they're a completely different animal. When they need something, they want it that second because typically court is going on and until we can get up there and help them, they're at a standstill. Over at the sheriff's office and jail, we have a lot of systems over there and we have our new comprehensive security upgrade that we're going to be doing probably end of this year and the next year. The IT person that we put over there will be able to assist with the system that we're putting in over there, as well as all of their other day-to-day -day activities. There's a letter in your packet from Sheriff Johnson and from Captain Anthony uh, Davis with regards to that position. The third position would handle all the other county offices. Okay, so senior center, voter registration facility, public works, that person is assigned to those offices. So when something comes up at them, that person knows those systems and can go in and help them with it as quickly as possible. Part of this is to try and reduce our response time to these different offices. Whenever an office has an issue, it affects their productivity, obviously. Okay. One of my goals for this department is to try and keep productivity high across all county offices. And in order to do that, I need people to be able to go take care of the issue and let them get on with their work. The other position is a network administrator. This is a very important role. This person would work directly under Cameron Burt as senior network engineer. Right now, Cameron is our gatekeeper. Okay? 90 plus percent of the settings and everything that goes into making everything work was by his design. If Cameron were to get hit by a bus, we would be in trouble. That is not an exaggeration. We've started documenting all the different systems and things like that, that he has had a hand in, which is everything. If I could just do a mind dump of Cameron, that'd be ideal, okay? But there's going to be some intellectual property that just 
doesn't get covered. I need someone in a position to be able to back him up right now. That's me. Okay, because I have the most network experience outside of him. I need someone to be there. So if we have a network catastrophe, they can step right into his shoes. Okay, or if there is a catastrophe, assist him. system. I'll give you a perfect example. The colonial pipeline. Hack. Okay, everybody remembers that, right? Mm -hmm. If they had had this system in place, they would not have had to pay the ransom. The reason why they paid the ransom is not like colonial did not have a backup. They did. They could have restored all of their data. The problem is, is the amount of time taking to restore that data. They got pressure from the U.S. government. That's why they paid the ransom. With this, as you can see, at any given time, we have three copies of our data on site. That's three backup copies, not including the original data. With the original data, there's four copies of our data. There's one backup on site here in the courthouse. It mirrors to another backup at Fire Station 2. Okay, that's part of disaster recovery in case there was a tornado or something like that. And a copy gets sent to the cloud. Now, a common question might be, well, is a cloud backup good enough? A cloud backup is a wonderful thing. The problem is, Storing that data takes forever. Okay, we back up about 15 terabytes of data right now. Okay, this system would back up 48 terabytes. So that gives us plenty of room to grow. And we are increasing data. The sheriff's office, for example, is saving more video data than ever before. Wonder why. Yeah, that's being figured into this. You have to, yeah. So, this is the system that we need to go with. All right. Uh, everybody's got this sheet. I think it's got all the requests that he's got for capital as well, because I don't want to strain his voice any more than it already is. It's underneath that, oh, probably. I'll keep going. Or you should have that one somewhere. So, you can look at that. And then formulate some questions if you want to for Herman that he can answer for you individually so that he, we don't keep straining his voice here. Uh, I will say that obviously we've made some positive moves in, in upgrading our technology, but we got some to go. And so that uh, uh, we don't wind up where we were before. And so 
Unless you have a specific question you want to ask him right now and strain his voice, we'll move on. We got any questions for Herman? I got one that maybe okay. Vicky can answer. The backup that Herman is talking about, is that what um, we were talking about with the SPLOSH 6 funds? Yes. Okay. That's the reason I wanted to wait till we got through all this process because a right. lot of this stuff that you're going to see on capital, we can put into Move that, around. into that, and make make this happen. Yes. We'll have yeah, the, we some revenue for we somebody. Added it to Splash Six. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Vicky, in hopes that maybe we could get it a little bit sooner. Yep. Uh, because if we get approved for it, you know, it starts in January. It's probably going to be March, and we are really stretching that back up right yeah. now. All right. Thank you, sir. Rest that voice. Thank you. I've never listened so closely in my life. <laughs> I, know. I believe I could repeat what you said. I mean, it's wonderful. We're going I think to need everybody ought to have to whisper. <laughs> we need to get him one of them old fashioned remedies to help him. <laughs> help that voice. There's some out there. All right, so now what time do we have? Let's see, where's my phone? I got, it's almost 9.20. All right, so we got close. All right, so next is going to be our tax commissioner, Ms. Nicole, when she gets here. And I think she has 9.30 or 9, 10 o'clock. Can you, can we buzz her and see if she can come on? That's true. Laura's here, so we could do yeah. Come on down. That's fine. <coughs> Laura's here, so we can go ahead with her. And then Nicole can still come at 10. It should be her regular time. Are you controlling? All right. Hold on just a, all right. That sounds good. Just a second. Let me get here. Really, the assembly room equipment's doing most of my presentation for me. It is, yeah. Um, all right, we're going to skip down and go on to public relations. Miss Laura's in the building. And uh, if you look, kind of a, just an overview quickly of her budget for you. Overall, her request is $500 less than what she was budgeted in 2021. And uh, primarily, there's a few changes you'll see throughout. Uh, she had a $20,000 professional service that she doesn't have in this year's budget request. And then there's some additions and technical service of $1,100, vehicle repair and maintenance of 1,000 she didn't have before, but she does drive around. So now they charge that to her. <laughs> Uh, nine hundred dollars in advertising, thirteen hundred seventy-five in uh, travel, or dues and fees. Uh, in reference to that, but her primarily, the big thing that brings her here today is her capital request, yes. which is the assembly room technology, which we have witnessed once again this morning. So, um, <laughs> you'll explain that need. Okay, so. As you have seen, I'm calling this the 2021 microphone debacle. <laughs> so, but with the capital improvement, what this would be would be a full upgrade for the assembly room. So last year in 2020, we did have four cameras installed with the new system over here that does allow us to Zoom and Facebook Live all of our board meetings. Unfortunately, what we are now faced with is the county clerk's computer is no longer able to be up or upgraded to accommodate uh, the security for Microsoft, I guess, and everything that IT is needing, which is bumping us into another realm of the voting software that we use is actually a proprietary system that we don't have in order to move on to another system. It's, it's basically, it's past its lifetime. So that throws us into needing a new computer here, a new voting system, the 20,000 from last year was actually, we were gonna to try to do microphones in the audience. And so that way, when we have anybody that stands up or asks questions back here, anybody online can also hear that. It would also give us the ability to control the volume of the microphones. Um, right now, the way that the wiring is done, we just 
don't have that capability. So in trying to get the microphones for this year with COVID, it's been a little difficult. So we decided to move that and try to do it all at one time instead of piecemealing it together. So the 20,000 won't be spent this year. Um, plus we just really couldn't get the parts. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm trying to do that side yeah, of it. Pieces, yeah. So I think we would probably be able to save money on the voting system. That's one of the things we're looking at. We already currently pay for Unicode meetings, which is what we use for agendas and minutes and um, our website. In that, there is a voting software included. So depending on how that would work with the equipment that's installed, we should be able to save money since we're technically already paying for that. Um, I believe Johns Creek is one that uses a similar system. So once we get more of an idea of where we're moving ahead, we're gonna go look at several systems and see what would work best in this room. Um, so the 76,000 is an estimate. Platts did come out and look at everything to try to see what we would need. Um, there's a DSP that's in the back closet that anytime we have a power outage or a power, fl power flicker, it resets everything in this room. And so we have to come back in and, and redo it. So that's another piece that would need to be added for um, replacement. So Platts has also applied to be on the state contract. So they should know, I guess, within the next couple months if they will be on that. So some of the pricing could change because pricing that they provided to me was not necessarily contract pricing. So um, hopefully that number could be lower than the 76,000. So, um, oh, I forgot about the slides. It's okay. If you want to. So, sure. Any questions on the capital? Questions for Laura. Does that not have to be bid out to a bidding process? So if they are on the state contract, it's my understanding that we would be able to use them. It's not a state contract. It's been bid. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So, and that's why I said it's just an estimate. That's who did our um, most recent. So I started with them just to see where we would be. Um, but I would obviously work with Melissa. And if we do need to, then we would put that out. But this is another one of those items that we can look through Splash Six mm -hmm. to find through information technology function of that portion as well. Other questions for Laura? You have any questions in reference to any of the other items in her budget? I mean, her overall request, as I said, is less than what she got this year. And the twenty thousand will be not 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 distributed used. this year. So yeah. <clears throat> trying to save money so yeah. make it a little bit easier so the, the camera system and everything it'll be able to be used with the new yes system, correct? so that is not anything that has to be replaced that will be with the new system as well um but really we were trying to we were going to do it in stages um but when we had the county clerk's computer when we had that issue it makes more sense to just do it at once so that way they're in here and no. All wiring is done. All but meshes that together. system is current, up to date, and would still be used. Okay. Any other questions for Laura? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I didn't need the presentation. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, we're moving along rather rapidly here, which is good. All right, Miss Nicole, come on up and tell us a little bit about what the tax commissioner needs are. Let me get that out of the way. A little, sorry. Just, that's fine. I don't uh, have my water in case I start coughing. Just for the board's. Uh, uh, knowledge you'll see that the overall difference between her approved 2021 budget 2022 is 32,000 her request in 2022 was 32,356 now part of that was in salary and group insurance matter of fact the majority of that about 24,000 and something of that and that's stuff that we did so there's not much we can do there as far as change uh, a couple of questions that I did have for you is uh, 
increase in postage of about $2,500 and $1,900 in printing and binding. And I'm sure that has to do with increasing number of uh, bills that go out and a few other things, but you can touch on those two things if you would like. Yes. And then, but the primarily she's here today because she's asking for a new full-time position. And she does have a capital project that she's requesting of a new building of $400,000, which you'll see on your all's paperwork there. So you'll touch on those uh, postage and advertising and then go about the personnel and the building. Will do. All righty. <clears throat> so this year for our 21 digest, um, we had 3,000 new residential house bills. So for those, we send a tax bill and we send a car renewal. If they have one car, they get one. There's a good chance they may have two cars, so they're getting two. Um, so there's printing and postage on those. Um, that's just for 21, what Elaine showed that was finalized January 1st. Um, I don't know what it's going to be. I'm assuming it's going to be another increase for next year, so we'll have more. Um, and we also send them when they move into the county, they get a brochure from us that tells them about exemptions and kind of different things in the county. Um, that's an estimate. I will say I looked this morning at our postage and we are going to either just make it by the end of the year or be a little short from where we are right now. So that's why I asked for a little bit of increase on that. Um, on both of those really. Postage is the one I haven't seen and I did look again this morning in case I haven't seen that there's a postage increase. They haven't put anything out, but sometimes they don't come out until December. No, so the talks that I've seen they are what is it currently? It's fifty five. Yeah. I've seen several articles <clears throat> Yeah. So they've done it pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. So that's a new I know it really, and it's such a, it's so unfortunate because it's, when it comes up here for me, it's hard for me to ask because I really don't, it's an estimate. I just kind of well, took always what remember, we spent Always remember months. that we can make those adjustments throughout the year if we have to. Yeah. So, so do I just come before y'all yeah. again? Okay. Just come back if you, you need that by the end year. of this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so postage um, and printing too, sometimes it's a little hard. Um, yeah. The only other thing I will say that I did ask that's new on my budget, um, under property r and &M. <clears throat> we currently have a shred machine that you shred stuff in. Um, it's been there a long time and it's, it still works. It's very dusty and it's, it's starting to have some issues. Um, so I looked into buying a new one. They're rather expensive. So I actually got with Melissa on um, a shred. It's American Document Securities, a shredding company that comes once a month. I think it's once a month or once in a month and a half and shreds and they would give us a certificate saying they've shredded. Um, and it's actually who I know the second floor and some other departments use in the courthouse. So I just, so it's down. cheaper than having your own. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Melissa was great. She helped me with that. So that one is something I've never had before. That's my only kind of ad I was going to point out to y'all. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, Questions on this? Questions for Nicole? Employee? Reference to that before she gets on with the employee <clears throat> and build it. I tried to put it in pretty detail. I might be a little OCD <clears throat> on what all's on there. So always ask me if you got any questions. Are you going to talk about your full time position? Yes, ma'am. I'm with it. But you're going to this other first. Is that right? Yeah, I'm, it's, if you guys got any more questions on this, we'll move. Are y'all good with this? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on. So on the employee, um, I have a frozen full-time position. It's my um, accountant position. It was frozen when I came in. Um, I think it was frozen maybe a year or two before I came in. Um, so it's never been open since I've been here. This person would mainly um, send them back into our accounting. Right now, Amanda's great. She does double duty for me and she does our accounting. Um, but this year, our accounting, we're going to have to look at doing it a little bit differently. And when I was discussing things with Amanda with the auditors, um, one of my concerns was it wasn't that we had someone that could sit back there every day and reissue these checks or 
whatever they needed um, for how they would like our county to be done on checks that haven't cleared that we've written citizens. So um, Amanda's response to me was, well, then you need to get someone. Yeah, it's a very pleasant conversation. So I thought, well, I will ask. I'll put it out there um, because it would be nice to have an accountant that that's mainly what they focus on. Amanda does go over and work on it the first half of the morning every day. And then the second half, she comes over and does um, her stuff as a deputy. So. Questions? Okay, talk about the building. <clears throat> I came... <clears throat> I don't think, I guess I, I don't think I came up last year. Sorry, with COVID, I can't remember. I think it was the year before I'd asked um, for a building to look at buildings. Um, we had kind of looked around. I know COVID kind of, you know, changed everything. I was listed before on our SPLOS, but I think I may have been one of the ones that was kind of taken out when T-SPLOS didn't pass, which I completely understand. There was other things I had to be put in. So it's mainly just to be asked to be put back into that. Um, there is a building that I've reached out. I've had a couple of realtors reach out to try to find out a price. Can't really seem to get a price on it. Um, but I think it would be nice to have us maybe out of this building with the drive-thru. A drive-thru would be really nice because especially during COVID, we could shut our lobby, but just have the drive-thru open and not have to worry about that. So that was my main thing for that is the walk for citizens and a drive-thru. Where, where is the building? Where do you want the building? Uh, well, I was, um, I'm really open to anywhere, but there is an open bank building down at 400. And I thought that'd be nice because it's already got the drive through. We'd have to probably, um, really wouldn't have to do much. Maybe add some more teller stations. Where SunTrust used to be. Mm -hmm. That'd be a lot more fun. So, uh, I, I, the only quote I've semi gotten, and it's not, I don't want to say it's not legit, but I don't know how real it is because I never came back by email or letter. Was I did have a realtor ask, and it was like three twenty, so that's why I put that. Oh, but man. that was months ago, and we <clears> still <throat> I don't know what I I don't know if someone's that. already planning yeah. on buying it. Like I don't know what the plan is because yeah, nobody will respond back. <laughs> no. What about so that's a very vague number. Like obviously, if it's not in that building, it would be less or something different. What about we look at that? Renting a, a retail space. Why do we have to have our own building? I mean, uh, I know I that mean, there's like fine. some drive-through locations for um, um, dry cleaners and stuff on the very end of a retail center. Mm -hmm. I mean, instead of purchasing a building, I mean, I think we could we could get into a retail situation potentially just yeah. as an option instead of buying maybe. Yeah, that's. I mean, I'm not opposed to that. I don't know. Um, how we, how y'all are, I guess. You typically buy your buildings, you typically rent, I'm not sure how that works. And I would like to at least have probably two lanes. That'd be the only thing. So the first could be handicapped, the second could be renewals. Uh, you I remember when Linda Townley was here and she tried to do some kind of office down at the And what happened, Did, was there not enough People, what do you? At I that don't particular time, happened. they weren't able to do everything that the tax commissioner's office does. In other words, they could do tags, I believe, but mm -hmm. they couldn't do property tax. Oh, okay. so if a person was going to have to come up here anyway to pay their property tax bill, they just did their tag up here as well. So that kind of, I don't know, it's the technology bad. wasn't there or something other because they had they deal with the state and everything's through the state, mm -hmm. everything's tied to the state. I think was part of that problem as well. Now, my question would be, this would be a second office versus? Um, I'm fine with it, I, which well, I, don't I don't know what you put down I there. Think the problem would be, out. I think the blowback would be that if somebody's got to drive all the way from Big Canoe down to 400 when they've been coming to Dawsonville to pay their property taxes. Uh, but I could see more of a, at some point in time, a satellite office versus just completely moving everything out of the courthouse. And oh, is that what you're talking about? Completely moving? I'm good either way. I'm, oh, I'm really good that, either way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, mentioned, okay. You know, I'm really not here. demanding. <laughs> but, uh, what? I'm really not demanding on it besides we do. I, I, I'm just trying to get it straight. It's <laughs> yeah. me, it's not you. No, you're good. I just think that would be an issue for the public. 
Yeah, I do too. To move everything like 400 or something, even mm -hmm. though that's where a lot of people live. But still, I think that would cause a major And I issue. would say, even though I don't have experience in it, just having other tax commissioners that have satellite offices mm -hmm. or whatever, I would think now we could have everything in an additional office. Because yeah. when I, other counties, they don't really have it where it's one thing, it's everything. Didn't you, didn't we have a conversation one time about a <clears throat> automated kiosk or something? Yeah, was We're on, um, yeah, I think I talked to Tim about it a couple months ago. Um, yeah, and we're on a wait list for it. I guess they've had some issues with supplies and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we are on a wait list. Last I heard, we were behind Hall County. They were going to get another one down by their actual office somewhere. Um, so I'm in hopes before the end of the year, having one of those. And where I'm thinking it would be Kroger, because they put them in the Kroger, so it'd be Kroger at 400. And those would do straight renewals. And if you own an insurance fee, you could pay it there. Yeah, you, you see, <clears throat> good or bad, I mean, I'm not a big fan of it, but we've seen in the banking industry where it's gone away from employees and bodies in some of these locations to just, it's more automated mm -hmm. and, you know, the, your long-term carrying cost of an employee versus trying to automate some of that stuff. Um, that's what, um, you know, I, I get buying a building, but the same sense is if we can put the money in the technology in ways mm -hmm. to, to streamline and automate some of that stuff potentially. Yeah. That's why I'm thinking about maybe renting or and, a location for a while. Or something. And I will say on the, on the kiosk, so it's not completely free. It could be free. So they give it to you, I think it's for three or six months at no cost. And then you have to do so many transactions in it to receive it for free. So, um, you know, there's a potential. It could not be anything cost to the county and just something for the citizens. And I will say it's like another employee and that's, you know, never calls out or is sick. So, yeah. Hopefully. We have kiosks now. Why? We where? We, oh. did. we don't have one in Dawson County. We are included in the system, but we're we don't have one physically in our county. Okay. There's one in. Um, there's two in Forsyth. Somebody was, was it David? You were telling me you, like you could pay in Forsyth. You could go. Oh anywhere. yeah, you can go to any of them because we actually there's oh. one in Cobb County that we must have a lot of citizens that work somewhere near it because we get a lot of renewal from there. Because the money the money's transferred up to us and we can see what kiosk they came from. Are you talking about tag renewal? <laughs> Oh, uh, can you pay your property taxes on stuff like that? That you can't right now. Okay. But you can pay it online. You can pay it online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is the same. Like if you pay with a credit or debit card, it's the same price online or in the office. So we encourage people to save the trip. You're going to pay that way anyway. Well, what about us that like to come in there and see all y'all pleasant people? Well, we love for you to come in. And just everybody's so friendly <laughs> and so efficient. And I just we love try. the experience. <laughs> come see us anytime. We try. You're trying to keep me out of that all I know what this is about. Come on, you can come down anytime. <laughs> Any other questions for Nicole? How many of those kiosks are we in line for? One or two? Just one. Just one. Um, because I'd really like to see how I did that first year. If, because if we're going to have to pay, I'm going to have to come before y'all. So we don't want to. Can we do an IGA, say, with Pickens County and put one up at Big Canoe and do a, a mutual split if it's cross county lines? Then it seems like we may be able to <coughs> facilitate putting one up there, Bob. Maybe. Um, yeah, we could check and see. I don't think um, Daniel, the tax commissioner, would have an issue with that. Um, I would have to be their commissioners, but I don't see why, especially if you're going to split it and you would hope is. There's going to be people that you're pulling from out sure. too that's mm -hmm. going to pay for that too. Because sure. I know we obviously help Cobb <clears throat> County a lot for mm -hmm. Scythe and Hall because our citizens go there. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, that would be a good idea. Commissioner Satterfield brought that up. So I think he paid his somewhere or another. He yeah, it's, it's yeah. super easy. There's yeah. one, I think Sorry. it exits 17. Yeah. You just scan the back of your driver's license or the slip. Um, Pay with your card and it prints out. That's really nice. They mail you the little emblem thing. It prints out. The little details come out. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really nice. So it kind of works like what y'all's 
<clears throat> as y'all's printer. I mean, mm -hmm. you print them when you put the paper in as well. Yeah, I really wish um, they would do something where you could have one and we could find advertisement on it, like car lots or different things. And that way more counties could have them. They wouldn't cost anything. But right now that's not, they don't want to do that. Cause we brought that to the company before to see if they would do that. Cause like here, we only have one or two. So I'm sure they wouldn't mind having their logo on it and help pay for it. But. So what is the company that provides these get out of this? What, what they, do they charge? When you renew, like, so when you come in and see us and you have a standard tag, it's $20. When you renew with them, you pay the $20 and I think it's either a two or three dollar fee, convenience fee or something <clears throat> that goes to them. And that's what they collect on. So they have it figured out, I guess, what the cost is for the kiosk to them. And that's how many transactions you got to do to cover their cost. But to your point, I mean, on our end, if that's <clears throat> call it one body, one, I mean, one extra person, then that's. Yeah. Sixty thousand dollars a year cost to us to handle that many transactions, and it gives more convenience to citizens being mm -hmm. other options. So, oh yeah, no, I would, I would love it. Hopefully, like I said, hopefully we will see something before the end of the year because I think it'd be great. Because it is, you know, we're open eight to five. We're open the hours of the courthouse. So if you need it after hours, or if you're going to Florida and you need it Saturday morning, you can get it before you get out of town and your tags are expired. So. Mm -hmm. I think that's what happened to him. He got yeah. down to the last day. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Sunday. Oh, it was Sunday. Yeah. So. He's willing to play the procrastination charge. <laughs> I like that. Here. That's funny. Yeah, I think that's what happened to him. That's what we'll call it. But yeah, so it, it makes it easier because, of course, it's upsetting if you realize that and you have to now wait till Monday at 8 05 to leave because you got to be here at 8 to get your tag. So. I mean, it is convenient to people. Definitely. Well, she doesn't have to pay a penalty for being late. <laughs> it would cost you two dollars. I mean, a gallon of gas coming from the canoe to here. Two dollars in gas. Any other questions for Nicole? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All right, let's find my list. Public Defender's Office. Now, I know Brad's not coming. Someone else is coming in his place. Yeah. I do see that we have the tax assessor here. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Anyone need a break? We need to break. We move on. I could stretch a little bit. Right, we'll <laughs> take a minute. We'll take about three minutes and then we'll do the tax assessment. And she's here.
Watch us or Jerry from here. Well, we'll go ahead and start back, um, kind of <clears throat> skip around a little bit here on our schedule because Miss Elaine is here from the tax assessor's office. So I'll have her come on up and uh, explain her budget to you. And just for the board's knowledge, you will see that uh, professional services uh, there's a change of 25,000 from what was approved in 2021. She'll explain that request to you. Um, that's to, and then professional services attorney is an add back of $5,000. There was no money in that for last year. And so we'll let her explain that as well. Uh, and then technical services computer, there's some increase there of about $5,000 that uh, I'd like to let her explain that portion too as well and so and then small equipment there's a request to make some replacement on some uh, computer equipment that people go out and use and then so the change from her 2021 budget to her 2022 request is fifty one thousand and twenty six dollars so miss lane you're up yes sir i appreciate y'all taking time to listen to me this morning and i i noticed y'all were moving quickly Mr. Purdue wanted to be here and I'd ask him to be here early this morning because I know sometimes it moves quickly, quickly. So he may come in or he may come in a little later. I couldn't get in touch with him this morning. So uh, I would ask if he comes in, if y'all would maybe put him on the schedule and listen to whatever he has. Uh, but he he had planned on being here. I do know that. Um, I'm not sure what the holdup is with that. So um, if you look at our request for this year, uh, as y'all know, the real estate market is changing. We are growing by leaps and bounds. We're adding subdivisions, rooftops. That's causing our parcel count to go up. Um, what is it now? Six, did you say six? What we're was 15 right a under, long time? We're right under 16,000 for 2021. For 2022, with everything that the, the county is adding and what's being added by the city, we're looking at being at 17,500. Because you think about each house in a subdivision adds one parcel. And then we've got an, an unreal number of splits where folks are selling smaller parcels of their property off for 2021. Um, real estate market is just crazy. Oh. Um, you know, and, and trying to keep up with that growth. And, and that's the reason that you see a lot of the request for additional funds from us this year. The first one is for professional services. You all granted us uh, a contract with McCormick Solutions last year. And I believe the cost on that was 39500 Big if I'm not mistaken, something like that. Um, we would like to keep on an ongoing basis with McCormick Solutions. They're valuable to us working on our schedules, keeping those within the ratio. And that frees up one of our field appraisers to be out in the field full time, um, rather than being in the office doing the analytical work with me. They also offer us timber extraction, which is something that's required through Department of Revenue each year. That would be included in this contract, along with updating our schedules and assisting us with commercial appraisal and commercial field work should the need arise. Um, they also help with appeals. They've created software for us that we're using in the office that would replace the need for the professional service audit line, which is $4,500. 
the software allows us to do those audits on our personal property in depth more than we were able to do before. So, so. if you go with, if, if you do this McCormick, then we can just mark out the 45. Yes, ma'am. And also there's an extra, I believe, $5,000 in our technical services computer that was for data cloud solution. We no longer use them. Um, all of the work that we were we were having performed through their services, McCormick Solution is doing that for us under their contract, so we could take five thousand from that. As now, where, well. where, where, where is that? That would go back down to twenty five. Uh, it could go back down to twenty five. Yes, sir. There's the audit. Yeah, but here's the audit. Where's the five? It's the in that thirty thousand. Oh, okay. twenty five to thirty, so that five would come in. Go back to twenty five. Oh, okay. So you're talking net out professional service would be a request of twenty thousand for twelve would be twenty thousand five hundred dollars. Correct. And I think um Commissioner yeah. Thurman, you had mentioned that uh, the five thousand dollars in professional services attorney. Yes. I think that was actually in our professional services line last What's that now? year. The line item for professional services attorney. Okay. I think I think we removed that last year because we used the county attorney. So there's no need for us to have that. I think we bumped that up to professional services in case we had to contract to do more appeals with. So an attorney, you're going to use the county attorney still? Yes. Okay. So, so that's you're going to mark out the five. So that number don't need to be there. <coughs> well, we just almost got McCormick paid for. Okay. So that's five, 10, 14, five. What's the contract for McCormick? 30,000 30, for the year. We're, we're okay. working on it. We're getting there. And, and we're currently under an extended contract with them through the end of the year. Uh huh to go ahead and begin working on our schedules for next year because of the okay. ups and downs in the market that we're seeing. Okay. Um, and, and I would ask it, it be considered um, in place of an employee. I mean, the work they're doing right. would replace an employee. Uh, Natalie calculated that for me and the cost for an empl additional employee would be around 60 to $63,000. Mm -hmm. So if we could Right. have this ongoing contract it would keep us from being in the situation we were in a few years ago where we had to pay out five hundred six hundred thousand dollars to have a county-wide revaluation done we're updating everything on an annual basis at this point. wonderful okay. that's what needs to be done anyway yeah sounds good i believe there's a request vehicle repair and maintenance we've taken on a fourth vehicle um county manager and sharon harvin were good enough to give us a vehicle and and i said all along when we asked for a fourth vehicle if we could get used because of some of the areas that we go into mm -hmm. and they gave us i believe the impala that the da's office turned in right. which works well here for the city area is it Kevin running does. yes is it they get it running mm -hmm. yes ac works better than it does in the explorer so <laughs> kevin's well pleased with that especially today <laughs> Um, Did you get the green algae off of yes, it? Yes, yes. My guys washed. took it to the car wash and scrubbed it, and and, <laughs> and it looks it looks whiter than the sticker they put on it that says Dawson County. So <laughs> they're doing good with that. Kevin calls it his hoopty, and he drives it and loves it. Okay. Um, but Shannon recommended up in my line item for repair maintenance since we do now have three older vehicles. Um, if okay. we could consider that. So that's the increase. Yes, that's the increase. Okay. Yeah. okay. So you said that's fourth vehicle? Yes. Yes. And that allows each one of our field appraisers now to have a dedicated vehicle to use instead of them going out doubled up. It increases their time in the field and their productivity. I ask for an increase in postage just because we're mailing more with businesses parcel count going up, our postage is going up with those required mailings. Printing and binding the cost to print uh, personal property returns as our count grows, our cost grows, and also the assessment notices. Again, as our count grows, the cost to print those will grow. Um, I did ask for an increase in travel, um, 1500, just for us to be able to catch up on training Department of Revenue offered very little virtual training during the COVID time, and we're all grasping for hours now um, in, in scrambling to get those. And of course, that requires travel. And as you know, the cost of hotel room, everything has gone up. So that would accommodate for that. 
as well as um, our board members training. We, we're required to send them to 40 hours per year once they get that first 80 hours in. Mm -hmm. and the other request for an increase is small equipment. We have been using iPads in the field. Those have timed out on us. The lifespan of those is about three years, and we have we have some that are failing us now. So we're we're replacing those, trying to replace those with Microsoft Surface Pro, which does serves a dual purpose for us. The guys can use the tablet part in the field as their camera to take the pictures of the parcels um, in the houses, as well as connecting back to the computer once they get here and downloading their pictures. It saves them a step going from the camera, a paper property record card, putting the the sims card or the picture card in the card reader it just it saves a lot of time in that process and then should they have to work remotely if we would have to be staggered again they would have the ability to do that from home we're purchasing those that have uh, capability of lte so we would switch our plan from the ipads the, the sale plan from the ipads to the uh, surface pros we've ordered two so far and Ms. Beaky was gracious <coughs> enough to transfer one that her department's no longer using to our department. So that helps us on that increase. Can I explain, why would you put 500 back on? I, I know. In case y'all chose not to overdraft, <coughs> uh, usually the conference is based on you are approving a specific request. They don't make that change until we yeah. approve it. <laughs> okay. That, that, that's all. I, I, that's <laughs> Mrs. Mayor, it is. <laughs> Okay, so I knew that was. Change that much money to trim. It messes me up every year. I knew that was. <laughs> well, that comes I about. Knew. That comes about too with their meeting with all the department heads, and so you know you'll see where like in some of the line items that she just discussed they are recommending that same dollar amount that she's mm -hmm, asking for mm -hmm. because they're already showing some kind of justification for that and that's along the trend it okay. goes along with the trend and that's the reason i don't mention some of that stuff is because okay the trend proves it out to be that cost okay and so uh I think it's up. so that's the reason that you know she did a good job explaining even the ones that i didn't bring up is because it, they've already met and they've talked about those okay. trends and stuff that's that close. Well, I mean, you see that and you think, whoa. Yep. I will say this on, on behalf of our finance department. There has not ever been a time that I've called and asked a question of Vicki, Natalie, Melissa, any of those folks in finance that they've not been just immediately back to me with an answer and they're helpful to somebody that's relatively new to being a department head. Um, they've carried me a lot of times and I appreciate it. Heard that a time. Yes, we have. <laughs> They're great. I believe that's a trend. <laughs> it is. A trend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> that's what you call an attaboy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other questions for Miss Elaine? Thank you, ma'am, for the job you're doing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I would like to say uh, we did get uh, congratulations from our auditor with Department of Revenue. Um, there were several counties. I know you all received that sales ratio study. Um, if the county goes below 38% on that sales ratio study, they are not allowed to collect on their public utilities. So if you looked at that, there were a number of counties. There were like 57 counties out of 159 that fell below the ratio because they didn't increase with the market during last year during COVID. Mm. And uh, he congratulated us that we took the initiative and did that. So we'll, we'll stay in that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks y'all for the time. We appreciate it. I'm sorry, yeah. Jim. If he comes, we'll let him talk. I appreciate it. While we're yeah. still here. Yeah. yeah. He, he should. He hopefully will be here. Like I said, I tried to reach him when I could. So. Yeah. Okay. And if he does, we can talk. I know he's spoken to David a little bit Has about he? and that had to do with a rate increase and so uh, if he doesn't make it today then we can also we can we can listen to that at some further time as well thank you thank you
All right, so we'll have a little time because I think the other two are pretty much on their times before they can actually be here. And so I guess that means that we yeah. will. What about the public? Oh, 11 o'clock okay. for the public defender and 11.30 was our time frame for okay. Humane. Uh, Humane Society because tax assessor was actually in at 12. Right. And so we have a little time. So y'all want to take a break. And for those of you that are online with us, uh, we will be taking a little break until uh, they come back and they're here. Um, we do appreciate you being with us. Thank you. For those that don't know, we got the, uh, with the census data came out, I think it was before, cities 12.